Aries singles, welcome. Super singles, completely singles. This is the end of October, we'll call it. Uh, reading, uh, meet the soulmate. I'm just going to try to uh, meet your soulmate and kind of have a date with them and get to know them a little bit. And uh, look at a lot of the astrological signs, try to pick up on personality, behavior, uh, childhood, uh, personal history, stories they might tell you, maybe get a hit on the career, uh, what they might do for a living. And I look at this through the four pillars, uh, what I call emotional, uh, intellectual, and sexual, and love, and core values and lifestyle areas. And I'll put them all together. You have the four pillars uh, of a chair <laughs> or a table, something solid and pull two cards for each one of those areas and see what we get. So I imagine your soulmate's been circling a long time and you've been busy with other people, but now that you're totally completely single, they're gonna come down, we're gonna meet them. So I can see this typically being someone you wouldn't know. Um, so get back to me and let me know if you run into this person. I believe this is a great reading for if you're on a, a dating site, I know, God forbid, but and also, it's an always positive reading because I'm simply asking who is the right one for you. So don't be triggered if you see the Three of Swords or the Tower. It doesn't mean what typically may. But here we go with the Queen of Wands coming up. This is in the emotional nature. And the Three of Pentacles. Well, that's Fire and Earth. Um, I do read the Childhood there and the Moon. Let me keep going for a minute. In the intellectual nature, the magician, interesting. <laughs> Things just got interesting. Major Arcana, and I see that's kind of the conscious position, and all across and below is more of the unconscious energy. Uh, over the Page of Cups. Page of Cups. Wow, so right out of the chute, like I'm thinking about this uh, Mercury dominant person, for sure um, this person like knows way more than they let on they may come across man or a woman I think too with the Queen of Wands they're really physically attractive and uh, perhaps in some way dazzlingly attractive can I say that like just uh, in and physically but more uh, and it's like they just this page is coyness this coyness but for some reason and now this is scorpionic energy I'm getting I know you associate that with the magician that you might with the page of cups but um, because like they just know so much more and they don't want people to know that they know it's like they're, it's like someone, they're not exactly playing dumb, um, but they're just, let you talk and pretend to just be far more superficial than they are, you know? Now being a soulmate, it's hard to say this person would let you in, how quickly that would happen. So whether or not you would notice this, might, on a date you might simply notice that they're very attentive and they seem intelligent um, this is a fire moon here. And I like a Sagittarius moon here for this person. Uh, I'm a Sag sun, you know. Uh, every Sag moon I've ever known, they're intellectually curious at the very least. And so they typically they know a lot because they, you know, if they're perusing Facebook or whatever, they're gonna stop and read that article about the dinosaurs or the relationships or the whatever. Uh, and so they tend to have, uh, they can usually discourse on any subject. Uh, and they have a really nice social way about them. It's not that sad sun energy that can be a little assholey, you know, like hurrah for me and F you and come on, come on. Um, it's just kind of, as a moon, it's a lot like the Leo, Leo moon. Uh, it's a very bright moon, and so typically, emotionally, the way uh, Sagittarius moon needs to be to feel secure is lighthearted. Um, so one thing that they don't typically uh, like 
is the scorpionic stuff of the darkness and the eighth house and all that uh, even for the good you know sometimes you got to go down there and, and and figure that stuff out and that would be like the fault of let's say these uh, leo and uh, sag uh, moons uh here because um, they don't really want to do that um, but when you see the three of pentacles down here underneath this queen of wands I get that this person had a single, probably a mom, because you know, that's how it goes. It could have been a dad. But they were raised by a single parent who kind of gave them everything. Um, but uh, this child would have been self-sufficient at a young age, but in, in a pretty healthy way. I see them have a pretty solid childhood here. Um, the parent uh, taught them sort of how to take care of themselves. It's such a good card. The Three of Pentacles, the good worker card, the good, great artisan takes pride in their work, loves their work, often the artist. I'm not saying their parent was an artist, they probably worked pretty hard with this Three of Pentacles. Let me look at their sexual, shall we, and love nature, temperance. Here comes Sagittarius showing up here. Okay, Aries. And the Two of Cups. So we have temperance over the Two of Cups. This is in the sexual and love nature of your person here. So you can see those. If that isn't fire and water, fire and water, fire and water, that's fire and water, you know. And that's some lovey-dovey water there. That's like Pisces water to me. Let's see. Six of Pentacles. Hmm. Core values and lifestyle. We might see career, career here. And this is over the Wheel of Fortune. Huh. Six of Pentacles and over the Wheel of Fortune. Jupiter. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with Jupiter's transit right now. Uh, although it might. It, it, it could be Jupiter's dominant in their life. But I get the feeling this is someone that's had uh, ups and downs and has, because they're three of pinnacles, someone that like, they just, they know how to work smart. Um, they have a good mind and they know how to get things done. And they're kind of fair minded and uh, steady kind of person. But I think they've had some big breaks. Like, like uh, I hate to say inheritance could be a break, but you know, an inheritance that went their way, um, um, it could have gotten uh, a good severance package uh, from somewhere they were made to leave. And it kind of, you know, good for them, worked out in their favor in some way. Um, this could even be lottery winnings. But I get the feeling too, there's a German phrase that means luck is infatuated with the efficient. And you could say, like they may tell you stories about this luck, but you know, if you look at it, uh, they made their own luck by being efficient and being steady and uh, fair and create good karma. When you're in this three of uh, pentacles, six of pentacles, eight of pentacles, that's good personal energy where you're usually not generating any negative karma. That's doing your own thing, you know, unless you're trying to roll over somebody. And those energies there are not really rolling over people. So, um, they're probably not going to have stories of bad exes and things like this. They may tell you about their single parent, likely the mom. Um, and I'm trying really to get a bead on this, uh, because that does scream Sagittarius here, Venus. And imagine they had a Sagittarius moon and a Sagittarius Venus conjunct. And you look at how similar this is. That's going to nail us down on that uh, sign there. I think we would be looking at an Aquarius uh, sun uh, person with the magician that could roll that way. Look at just how similar it is, the colors. How does that feel? Just simpatico. 
And you're often going to see this inner emotional energy over here in column one in this sexual romantic energy. That's kind of how it usually works. And you see the magician in the intellectual column over here with the core values and lifestyle. Um, so I think you're looking at a Sagittarius Venus person here. Yeah. And you could have an Aquarius Sun. Now I think they have a Pisces Mercury. Mm. Which works for them. Uh, you know, it's debilitated. And I always think of the Aquarian Mercury as. I, I like it a lot. Like, I wish I had, I have the Sagittarius. I wish I had Aquarium Mercury. Everyone I've ever known with that, done, they're just sharp. They can get things done. It's a good mind. But I think with this person, there's a real quirkiness here. You know, with this Sagittarius moon and uh, Pisces uh, uh, Mercury here, um, it could be someone that's very creative. I mean, look, they have the magician in the main card of their intellect here. Um, so they could have energy in the third house too. Maybe their uh, Aquarius sun's in the third house there. Um, so um, maybe they're Sag ascendant. What if you had a Sag ascendant and a Sag moon and a Sag Venus in some kind of conjunction? That'd be something uh, in terms of their personality. It would damn well uh, give you somewhere to go. Uh, in terms of their um, uh, personality and behavior. And then you're going to be looking at a Pisces, uh, which originally my thought was this was a Pisces um, Mars energy. And um, what a nice mix, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of what they may do, too. Um, I, I get with this person that this entrepreneurial energy, um, there's someone, you know, the magician, they can sort of, uh, they may have had multiple businesses over their lives, like could roll like this, like uh, they get an inheritance and instead of like pissing it away, they invest it wa uh, wisely in their education and a sustainable business that yields uh, well for them over a period of time um, and then maybe they catch another break you know um, this is the kind of stories I think they're going to tell you but they're just the kind of person that can manifest you know they might have energy in their second house too you know uh, maybe that's where Jupiter is so they're just somebody that can manifest and they have a very balanced and easy way about them Yeah, and in terms of love though, you know, this is not someone's going to be clingy or needy. Um, they're someone that's going to respect your space, this kind of energy. Um, um, it love you in a, it really it's kind of an unconditional way. Like to be in Scorpio, it's a little scary because uh, it's a little bit of an impersonalness to this. But on the other hand, with Mars of Pisces, you know, um, sexually at least, I think that's where they're mostly going to show their emotions, you know, um, you may find. Um, and um, that could be a great thing, you know, it's maybe that's where they choose to put their um, emotional uh, expression mostly. Um, so if you see them outside, they do have their Mercury here in Pisces too. Um, I think they're kind of more receptive, you know, it's like they're not going to tell you like I'm having a bad day I think, uh, you know, the moon's in Pisces today. I'm, not, I'm feeling weepy uh, But they'd be very much interested. They might say to you literally like hey, how are you doing today? It's kind of is it kind of a weepy day for you and then you would kind of naturally kind of tend to go off talking about yourself and they may not, they may actually kind of almost consciously steer it away from them talking about it's a weeby day for them, just to make a little example, 
you know, um, and it's just kind of like the way they roll. But that's as a relationship, as a soulmate. And, and uh, I would just say with this Pisces Mars situation uh, with them and the Pisces Mercury, and maybe they're not conjunct, but they're simpatico in the same sign, probably in the same house. And uh, a good time to maybe really uh, bond with them is uh, sexually. You know, so maybe, you know, sometimes maybe there's things you want to say, conversations you want to have. Um, you know, maybe while you're in that energy and they're sated and safe feeling, you know, uh, with you. Um, um, that might be the time to kind of discuss things uh, with them even uh, as you go forward. Maybe just call that a little extra hint, you know. I would consider it wrong. I wouldn't think you'd discuss anything they didn't need discussing. Uh, maybe because you want to connect with them emotionally, or if you just really want to connect with them emotionally, accept the fact that that's going to be attached like to the sexuality. Um, and instead of looking at like any kind of bad things, just like, okay, well now I know uh, how to reach them emotionally um, in that kind of sexual way. And I, feel, I think you can feel it as you draw them in and the eye contact, it'll, you'll feel like this emotional connection that's probably uh, the strongest uh, that you then you normally ever feel it with them so let me know guys what you think of this i do appreciate likes uh comments are great they help uh, even if you get back to a couple weeks later and say oh man i ran into this person that would be awesome then so it's a uh, kind of a timeless read but i say the end of october it's for whenever you watch it and uh, do check out the soul family read too that's a daily collective read for whoever resonates more spiritual and personal and see if you want to be part of the soul family. Thank you, guys.